Okay. So we are going to get into uh, the, the series that we're in is what's my role, what's your role. Um, I want to take a few minutes, kind of gather everything together before we press in. So one of the first things that we need to know is who are we? You need to know your identity. Okay. Um, a lot of people spend a large part of their life trying to figure out who they are. I never had to worry about that because my mom and dad made it very plain who I was. You cook Wednesday, I was the cook. You clean the bathroom, I was the bathroom cleaner. Um, but in Christ, we have an identity. And, and we have to establish what that identity is first before we can understand our role in that. So if you have your Bible, um, flip open to 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, if you don't have your Bible, there, there should be one in the chair in front of you. I would encourage you to go there with me. 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay, um, the passage I want to read is, is verse 9 and on, but I'm actually going to back up because verse 9 starts with the word but. Okay, and, and it's never a good idea to start in the middle. You always want to back up and read the passage in context. So I'm going to back up to verse 4. Um, As you come to him, who is Jesus, a living stone rejected by men in the sight of God, chosen and precious. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a, a, in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. So now we see that uh, Peter is addressing the church and we see that, uh, you know, that, that the, the term Christian uh, it actually started as a derogatory term. It, it started, and, and it, in the, the Greek, it means little Christs or little anointed ones. And it started out as a term of derision to mock those that were followers of what was at that time known as the way. Okay, And, and at that point, uh, this was a predominantly, what was considered a predominantly Jewish sect. All right? And so uh, we do have some writings of antiquity that, that note that uh, there were Neroites. Those were people that followed Nero, the emperor of Rome, and, and that was not a complimentary term, unless, of course, Nero was in your presence, and then you pretended it was a complimentary term. Um, but it started off as a, 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 a mockery. But when the Christians heard it, it describes us perfectly because we are to be little Christ or to be imitators of him. We are to be reflections of him. When people look at us and how we conduct ourselves and how we conduct our lives, they should see Christ in us. Okay. So as we see here, uh, Peter's coming at this with a little bit different angle. He says, um, Jesus is the living stone. Okay. And then we are... Uh, being built up as stones as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Okay, so we, we see that we are called to be like Jesus. And then he, he gives us this contrast. For those who believe he says, uh, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. We come back right to the root. Remember our formula, what equals salvation? 
Faith plus grace equals salvation, which will bring us into the works that God has uh, prepared for us. Okay, so those who believe in him will not be put to shame. Um, Romans tells us that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay, don't listen to that devil when he tries to get you down. When he tries to remind you of your failures. Because uh, in the... Uh, video that we watched Thursday in the brothers meeting, um, Chuck Missler said something that I, I believe was very profound. Um, he said that God loved us as much as he loved his own son, his only begotten son, because he was willing to give his son that he might gain us. And that to me is just amazing. <clears throat> amazing. That God would love us, that God would love me that much that he would give up that which he loved dearest that he might have me. So um, believers will not be put to shame, but then we see the other side of this, okay? Uh, Paul, Paul gives us a, a very similar um, illustration. I'll get to that in just a minute. Um, for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and this is a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. Okay? Now, now, Paul puts it this way. To those that believe, he is the fragrance of life. But to those that don't believe, he is a stench. A stench. Okay? Um, the world cannot understand, apart from the Spirit of God, who he is. And by their very nature, they are set in opposition to him. Okay? You know, you don't get to serve yourself. You might think you're serving yourself, but really you're, you're serving the enemy. You're doing everything that he wants because it keeps you from serving the one true God. Okay? So, um, so Paul or Peter lays out this, this uh, illustration, this contrast, uh, and they stumble because they, not, because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. We will get into destiny, predestination at a different time. Um, verse 9 is where I really want us to focus here. Okay? Um, but you, okay, in contrast to those who rejected him, uh, who did not follow him, uh, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellences, excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Now, th these two verses right here, wow, we could spend weeks just taking this apart and, and getting into it, digging deep. Um, one of the things that I believe that, that God wants from, for all believers, but, but specifically for this church, he wants us to be like the Bereans. He wants us to be a people that study his word. Because I, I'll tell you what, the deeper you dig, you will never get to the bottom of the understanding of this word. There's always something new. Always something new. And so um, I want us to be people that dig deep so that our foundation is secure, that we will not be shaken, we will not be tossed by every wind of doctrine. We will stand firm knowing what he has told us is true. Okay, so let's go back up here. Um, we see this in, in, in Peter. Now, Peter was a Jew. Okay? And so what he's saying here to us is actually an offense to what he would have been taught through the majority of his life. Because to the Jew, who are the chosen people? Israel. Yeah. You know? The, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. Now, uh, when he says, you are a chosen race, um, this does not displace Israel. Okay. As a matter of fact, when God took Israel out of Egypt, and he brought them up to um, the promised land, brought them up to Canaan. He did not let them go through areas, he said, no, you don't go there, you go here, because he was still honoring Abraham 
and Abraham's son and grandson, Ishmael and Esau, by not allowing the Israelites to take from them the land that God had given them. Okay? God is faithful to his word and his promises. Okay? And all of those promises that he gave to Israel will be fulfilled. We don't replace Israel. We are engrafted. We are put into the same vine as Israel. All right? So, we are a chosen race. Now, he says, a royal priesthood. Now, those two words really don't go together to the Jews. Because royalty comes through the line of David, through the tribe of Judah. And the priesthood comes through Aaron and the line of the Levites. And to put those two things together, no. The, they don't, that's not how this works. Okay? The, the, the royalty is here, the priesthood is here, and never the two shall mix. Except, Hebrews tells us otherwise. Because we have a high priest who is not after the order of Aaron, but is after the order of Melchizedek. Uh, a, a high priest with neither beginning nor end. Melchizedek is the, the prototype, the forerunner of the high priest that we now have. So he says we are a royal priesthood, meaning that uh, we are grafted in to royalty. We are children of the king. Uh, i got to back up. i, I got to say this. I saw this on Facebook, and I started to write. Actually, I did write an answer, and then I read it, and I deleted it. And then I wrote it again, and I read it, and I deleted it, and then I just shut Facebook down. Um, somebody put up on Facebook, and, and it's a believer, uh, and they put something about, we are all God's children. That is not true. That is not true. We are all God's creation, absolutely. Without God, there is no miracle of life. It is God that breathes life into everything, and by his word, everything holds together. But John and Romans make it very clear that only them that believe does he give the right to be called the children of God? Okay? So when, when you hear this, this, this thing thrown out there, oh, we're all God's children. Uh-uh. That's, that's not the case. It's only to them that believe those are his children. Okay? And, and our job, we should be in the adoption business. We should be getting out there and, and working to bring the lost, the creation of God, into the family of God. Okay, so a royal priesthood. Now, what did the priesthood do? What does this mean? What were the priests for? Say that again. Connection to God. Yeah, they were the ones that stood in between man and God. Now, uh, gosh, I guess it's already been a couple months ago. We talked about when God called the nation of Israel, and he was bringing them out of Egypt. He called them to be an entire nation of priests. Because remember what his, his promise to Abraham was, is that through you I will bless all nations. Okay? So, so when God called Israel out of Egypt, he said you are going to be a race of priests. They were going to be priests. They were going to be the intermediary between the rest of the world and God. They were going to teach the world about God and they were going to bring uh, the, the problems and the sins of the world to the sacrifice on behalf of the people to God. Okay, so, so the entire nation was called to be priests. But then things kind of got a little wonky, didn't they? Okay. Um, as they come out, God chooses Aaron, specifically Aaron, which amazes me because Aaron did some stupid things. I mean, that gives me hope. You know, because quite honestly, I, I look at Aaron, I see wishy-washy. You know? Hey, Moses up on the mountain. We need something to serve. We need, I just threw it in the fire and out came a golden calf. I, yeah. <laughs> and then Miriam. Who does Moses think he is? God speaks to us. Right, Aaron? Yep. <laughs> He's not any better than us. Right, Aaron? Nope. I'm sorry. I just see him as wishy-washy. He, he, you know, uh, he, he just kind of went wherever the wind was blowing. But God chose him. God picked him to be not just a priest, but to be the high priest. And this was a position such that he 
would make intercession for the entire nation once a year. He would come into the very presence of God once a year to make intercession for the people. Okay? So the, the, the priesthood is given to the line of Aaron, and then the Levites are also given to help with the, the running and the, the sacrifices and the cleaning and, and taking care of everything. Um, and then he says, uh, we are a royal priesthood. So not only are we uh, of the line of Jesus, of God, uh, who comes through the line of Judah. No, I'm not saying that all of a sudden we come from the line of Judah, but we are brothers to one that did, brothers and sisters to one that did. Okay? So, uh, a royal priesthood. Now, as, as a, a, a priest, what is our job? Well, we are to fulfill what God called the nation of Israel to do, and we are to be the intermediaries. We're to be the uh, um, fixers. We're to be the people that, you, you know, what do they call those... Those ladies, the, the matchmaker. You know, anybody know what I'm talking about? I know Nathan does. Nathan, can you sing the song? <laughs> no. no? <laughs> that's it. Match, that's it, matchmaker. That's really our job. Okay? Because we are to be introducing the bride to Christ, and, and we're bringing people into the bride of Christ. We're to be out there representing God to them, and we're to be interceding on behalf of them to God for their salvation. Okay, so we are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. Again, going back to Israel, God called them to be holy. What is holy? Set apart. Okay, not profane, not common, uh, not average. We are unique. We are pulled out of the group and we are made something different. Okay, think, I mean, think about this for a minute. The spirit of the living God lives inside of us. The spirit of the living God lives inside of us. Man, that's unique. That's amazing. So he calls us to be a holy nation. Now, he goes down further and explains this a little bit more. Um, there are Christians in every nation. So he's not speaking about countries or geopolitical things. He's, he's talking about... <coughs> Uh, being united into the body of Christ, which supersedes all national boundaries. Okay? Okay? Now, uh, that's not to say that, that uh, you aren't an American, but quite honestly, if your loyalty is to America first and God second, you've got things backwards. Okay? Because you can't be a nearly good enough American if you're not putting God first. You put God first, I guarantee you, you follow what is written in this word, you will make a marble citizen. Okay? So, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. And you look at these things, and this is all terminology of what Peter learned growing up was the nation of Israel. All of these things described who they were. Okay? We are chosen by him. But this is not without purpose, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We're truth tellers. We're messengers. We're ambassadors. We're witnesses. All of these things should be teaching us that, that we need to, we don't take salvation. What's that song? Hide it under a bushel. Oh, that was lame. No, 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 hide it under a bushel. Hide it under a bushel. No. no. Three times a charm. Hide it under a bushel. No. Okay, thank you. Don't hide it. All right. Um, a people for his own possession that we declare the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness. Hey, look, if, if your testimony uh, is based on... Um, anything other than I was lost, I was blind, I was dead. If it, I, was, I was doing pretty good, and, you, know, I, you know, I thought I would just get in on this whole uh, eternal, you know, heaven and harps and clouds thing. Um, that's not what salvation is. What salvation is an understanding of your desperate, wretched state and God's provision and glory and majesty that comes in and takes the, the wrecked child takes the child that has been destroyed and has been abused and, and knows nothing of good and he 
cleans us up and he washes us and he clothes us in white raiment that we might have, that we might be his very righteousness, okay? Um, so we are brought out of darkness into his light. Once you were not a people, now you are God's people, okay? You are God's people. Now, um, there's a lot we could say about that, but I, I want to tell you, I'm not lear I am learning this lesson, okay? I don't speak to this from a position of I've got it and you don't, but we have got to learn what it means to be doulos. Does anybody know what doulos is? Okay, here's your Greek for today, all right? Doulos, slave, okay? Now, in a lot of Bibles today, uh, if you read in the forward, there's a disclaimer that when they translate the word doulos, they, they intentionally reinterpret it, taking it away from slave, and, and they'll put in servant or bond servant. Okay? And the reason they do this is because in America, when we think of slave, what do we think? What's the first thing that pops into your head? Slavery. What pops into your head? Well, for me, it's roots. Kunta yeah. Kinte. Okay. Toby. Kunta Kinte. Toby. Okay. And and the pictures of of the the whip scarred backs and the lynchings and the the, the, the horrific things that went on uh, by mostly people that were proclaiming to be Christians. Okay. And so we look at that and we see it as a horrific thing. But if you look at how God established slavery in uh, the ordinances of Israel. Uh, this was actually a way for people to get themselves out of difficult spots. Okay? And there was a time they would serve for a time and then they were to be set free. And um, they could choose to stay as a servant. They were treated so well they decided, hey look, I stink at farming. I can't grow anything but rocks. I want to stay here, okay? And if they were in greed, uh, they would take the servant, they would put his ear up against the lintel post, and they'd punch a hole in it, put a gold ring in it, okay? Dulos, this person has chosen to serve me forever for this life, okay? That's us, dulos. We are slaves, no longer of sin, but we are slaves of righteousness, okay? So when, when you read and you go, slave of sin, yeah, that, that carries the, the right picture, but when it, it turns around and says bond servant or servant of Christ, it's the same word, okay? Um, and we learn to uh, understand that he is a good master, that he is faithful, that he has our best interest at heart, then we can really wrap ourselves up in the work that he's called us to do. Okay, um, dang it. All right, so once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. What, what is mercy? Undeserved. Yeah, grace is that you um, get something you do not deserve. Okay, uh, an acronym for it is God's riches at Christ's expense. Really what, what grace is, is that God took... Uh, our debt and washed it away and, and put it upon Jesus Christ. So we receive an inheritance in the kingdom. We receive a right standing with God. Mercy is the other side of that coin where you do not get what you do deserve. Okay? Because what do we deserve? Debt. Debt. Okay? Eternal separation from God. That's what we deserve. And with uh, one, the other has to come as well. With, with getting what you don't deserve has to come by definition you don't get what you do deserve okay because God's grace would be uh, only a, a partial work if he still required us to pay our due all right she's not here yet okay all right so um, one other passage flip over with me if you would to second Corinthians chapter 5. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite passages, uh, actually favorite chapters in the Bible. Um, I'm just going to hit a couple of verses. We're going to start at 16. 
Um, from now on, Paul writing to the Corinthian church, and by extension to us, therefore we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard, regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, and how do you get into Christ? Faith plus grace equals salvation. That's, that's the only way in. Okay? Um, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. You aren't what you were the moment before. You're something new. Okay? You are something marvelously new. Okay? The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay, now, just real quick, I'm going to touch on the things we've got. Yes, ma'am. She's here? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, just real quick here. We are new. We are no longer what we were. We are free to choose otherwise. Before Christ, we really didn't have a choice because whatever we did was just was was uh, permeated with sin. Okay? But in Christ, now you can choose not to sin, and you should choose not to sin. That's maturity. Uh, a lot of maturity is is finding out that things that we do are sin, and and we need to stop doing them. Uh, and then going down, uh, notice the direction of the reconciliation. God reconciled us to himself because he's the aggrieved party. He's the one that received the offense. We're the ones that were giving offense. He's the one that took offense. So he made a way that the relationship between us and him could be restored, could be opened, could be made anew that we might come into his presence. Okay, I'm going to wrap up there for today. Um, next week, we're going to start talking about the different things that the New Testament establishes in the church, uh, the, the uh, ecclesiology and, and the position, and then we're really going to start digging into the, the gifts that God has given to the church for the proper functioning. Um, now, we have uh, just a, oh, oh gosh, just a couple weeks left for um, Operation Christmas Child. And we're, are we doing the video first? Okay, so, um, Kathy, oh, Kathy, can you push the, the circular switch? Or, uh, yeah. Oh, which one? The last one. Just the green? Uh, the, no, there's another one. This is all I see. Mm. Um, the on the DVD, there was one more. There we go. Look at Zoom's DVD. Recipient story.
wapende wengine niliwalika ndugu zangu katika darasa afanyia darasa afanyia safari kuu niliwasaishi nilo wadogo zangu ndugu zangu watu kuingia kanisani <coughs> kabla ya ku kuingia katika darasa safari kuu nilikuwa simpendi Yesu lakini baada ya kuingia katika safari kuu nilimpenda Yesu Buckingham, and uh, she's the one who has inspired me on this journey that I have taken under my wing. And we wanted to kind of show you what, um, <coughs> well, how we pack our boxes. We're completely different, and she's going to fill in the blanks. But um, introduce, say something. <laughs> I'm Jerry Sue Buckingham, and um, uh, I am the collection drop-off center for Stevensville. I'm the leader for that. And uh, we just have three weeks until collection week. It's November 11, um, 18th through the 25th. And the collection drop-off for Stevensville is Community Baptist Church at the corner of um, Ravali and Buck Street. And I kind of feel like I'm preaching the choir this morning because this church has been involved with Operation Christmas Child for a long time. And um, I just trust that you are as blessed by the ministry as I am. I've been doing this for over 25 years. And um, I never tire in doing good when it comes to the shoe boxes. The uh, mission of uh, Operation Christmas Child is to demonstrate God's love in a tangible way to children in need around the world and together with the local church worldwide share the good news of Jesus Christ. The man who started um, this uh, ministry was a man, uh, Dr. Bob Pierce. And um, when we first started doing shoe boxes, you had to mail them to uh, Southern California. And God has just blessed this ministry abundantly. And so now um, they just ask you to give a $9 donation uh, with your box. And then that helps get the, the <coughs> box to the foreign country. And it also <coughs> provides uh, the greatest journey that you just saw the girl talking about on the video. And uh, every shoe box presents an opportunity for the child to know just the basics of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, his love for all of us who will believe, and then they also have the opportunity then to do the greatest journey which is a 12-week program they have the workbook that you saw that little girl with and when they complete that then they have a graduation ceremony it's a big deal in their church and um and they receive a certificate that they've, they've completed the course and they get a bible in their own language so my, um, why I pack shoe boxes is because I feel like it gives me the opportunity to be a foreign missionary. 
but I don't have to leave my home. I don't have to learn to eat weird food. I don't have to learn a foreign language. I really don't have to leave my comfort zone, my family, my home, and I don't have to buy an expensive ticket to get there. So that's the opportunity that every one of us have. We know with a surety that every box we send, that child and their family, their community, is going to receive the good news, Jesus Christ loves you. And um, it's, it's amazing the change that it has made uh, in individual lives, in families, and in whole communities. So. Isn't she amazing? Yeah. I just love her. Um, so Jean Gerard makes these dresses. I just want to make sure you... So, that's a, not a very nice stand. <laughs> Here, you hold this for me for a minute. You just insulted my stand. <laughs> um, Jean Gerard makes these little dresses. There's piles of them over there. You can... They're like little dresses or for an older girl could be a blouse. And they're free for anybody who wants them. Um, and they're all different. They're really cute. So anyway, I wanted to show you how I start. She got me into this. <laughs> and I go a little crazy. But I do it over the year. And um, I pick up, I'm always doing little girls. Don't know why. <laughs> um, but I always pick up hair things. Easter time, there's all kinds of bracelets and little things at Walmart, especially stuffies that are inexpensive. And you start putting stuff, you start picking a little bit up at a time, and by the time this year comes around, you got a box. This is from, of course, um, McDonald's. <laughs> this is a, you know, one of the little dolls. I had to buy that. And I stuff it with pencils and pens, and this is from Easter. You know, it's a, I don't know what it is, flower, brush. And then I'm really crazy, of, you know, toothbrushes are wonderful. Two stuffies this year. But stuffies are like the most important and to me and them, right? Isn't that like <laughs> the big deal? Anyway, I stuffed a dress in here. It needs some paper. I think I'd like to design a pad of paper that fits in these boxes perfectly because that is the problem when it comes down to paper. Jerry Sue is completely different than me. <laughs> she works on it all year long as well, but she does 12 boxes. You know, she smokes me, but I'm going to show you and I want to see how she does hers. Okay, because I'm the person who packs the shoe boxes, or help pack the shoe boxes, into the big cardboard cartons, um, I wanted to just remind you of some things while I'm here today. Um, you pack your shoe box, don't stuff it so full that the lid is popping off the top. If that happens, then start another box or maybe go with another person and use that. But they need to go into the cartons um, flat so that we can get as many carton, as many boxes as possible in each carton. When they go to the countries, the country says, um, okay, we will accept, um, I'll just say five cartons. So if we have these boxes and we can and put them in the carton just so, we can get um, oh, 15 to 16 shoe boxes in a carton. So if that's so, then we're, each carton has, uh, then the, I mean, the five cartons then means that 80 shoe boxes are going to that country and there are 80 children who are going to hear that Jesus loves them. And, but if we, um, if these are packed too full so that we can't get that many in, if you use a boot box, 
two of these boxes fit in a boot box. So then that means that instead of getting um, 16 boxes in a carton, we're only going to get probably about nine. So if those uh, five cartons go and one of them is uh, filled with boot boxes, that means that we've lost 35 shoe boxes going to that country. So please use the right boxes. This is your um, little folder that you get. It has, it has a boy or a girl um, sticker on it. You uh, mark what age group, 2 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14. Just make an X by the one that you're choosing. And then make sure that it's taped on um, completely. I like to use packing tape and just cover the whole thing so it doesn't get ripped off as it's being handled time and time again before it gets there. Um, in my box, I realized this morning that part of my stuff is in my storage shed. But I found some really cool uh, backpacks at the dollar store. This is not one, this is a tote. But, um, and it has strings, uh, cords that the, they can put on their back. It's real flat, um, but it's great for the kids. I've got toothbrush. Um, I insist on washcloth and soap. Um, I always send a bowl. And um, I've got a spoon in here someplace. I had a story of a child that received um, a box, and this was their favorite thing, was a bowl and a spoon, because in their family, they had one bowl to eat out of. And that was placed in the middle of the table. They had one spoon. And so the first one dipped in and took a bite. The spoon was passed, and it passed around the table and until they finished eating the whole bowl. But anyway, um, a calculator. This is for an older boy. Um, and erasers. I just saw the uh, uh, Amani um, um, African Children's Choir in Victor just a week ago. And they have three little boys. They've been traveling for a year from uh, their family in Africa. Um, but the boys all said their favorite thing was a car. So I always put a car in. Uh, school supplies, most of these kids in uh, other countries, it's not like the United States. Um, uh, they have to have all of their school supplies or they're not able to go to school. So there's crayons and erasers, uh, football. I made these little bags and I put a uh, tic-tac-toe on the outside. And, um, and then in, inside I have a, a bag that has those flat aquarium rocks, two different colors so they can play tic-tac-toe. And then I've got some marbles so they can play marbles. I put about a dozen marbles in. And then um, pencils and um, pencil sharpeners. And um, I found these really cool socks oh. they fit in, or the, um, these little pads. Um, they fit in there nicely. But you can use the big binder notebooks and just uh, put it in the bottom, first of all, and it curls around and it works great. And this year I also am doing some fishing kits for the older boys. And they can just, I got some fishing line, they can tie it onto a stick, sending lots of uh, different size hooks so all the boys in their neighborhood can go fishing. Um, if you noticed when I first held up my box, yeah. we have a mom. Okay, they ask that you, when you get your box all packed and you have your um, money or envelope just right on the very top and you close the lid, you've got it all marked, then you put one rubber band 
around the box. That's all that they want us to do. One. Yep, one. I thought it was one. Two. One. One. We're switching? One. That's the rule. Yep, one. And here's some Thank you. Those are the right size. Last year I got quite a few boxes that came, and one was lengthwise, and one was around the middle. And <coughs> don't do that. And you can't tie a ribbon and make a bow that it looks really pretty, but it doesn't work in the transport. So, so the whole between the Bitterroot Valley and Missoula, they delivered eight thousand boxes. We have an amazing valley, right? right. Hundreds. Um, how many did you collect? I think, I think from, um, well, in our collection center, we collected over 300 boxes last year. For the Bitterroot Valley, I, I'm not real good at remembering all these numbers, but uh, from the Bitterroot Valley, from Darby um, to Lolo, uh, we uh, collected, I think, around 4,000. And um, since 1993, more than 157 million shoe boxes have been collected and delivered to children in over 160 countries. And in 2018, more than 10 million boxes um, went um, and have been uh, received in foreign countries. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Great. Any questions? I just would like to say, if you if you want, you can go online and make Correct. your payment. Right. And then you can print out a uh, <laughs> user, you know, boy or girl thing that has a code on it, and you can track your box to find right. out what country it went to. Right. So that's, that's another so option. That's, yeah. You can buy your boxes online filled. Somebody in our church does that as well. So there's a lot of different ways. You were talking about notebooks that fit in the boxes. Yes. They have, uh, like Walmart and a lot of different places have composition books that is what most of the countries use. Which one? They're called composition books, and the smallest size would fit perfectly in the boxes. Okay. Okay, good to know. Thank you, you guys. I had to share my friend. She's my inspiration. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thanks, Glenn. Sure. Okay, um, we're going to wrap up. Uh, one of the things that I just want to reiterate is if uh, you know, you're worried about the $9 to ship it, come talk to me. Uh, we always make up what is lacking to make sure that all of the boxes are paid for. So don't let that uh, prevent you from doing this. You know, if this, this was just, hey, we're going to send stuff to other countries, okay, that, that might be admirable in and of itself. But this opens a door to share the gospel, okay? And that, to me, is priceless. Um, all right, let's pray, and then we'll dismiss. We thank you, Father, for the privilege of coming into your presence. We thank you, Father, that we have your mercy and your grace, and that, Father, you love us as much as you love your Son. We ask, Father, that you would go with us this week, that you would help us to represent you well. That, Father, we would always be ready to explain about the hope that we have. We bless you. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.